Hey guys, what's going on? This is Jeff. So today uh, we're gonna make a video. I haven't made a video for a while. You know, most of the, a lot of the content we've covered, but as things come up, you know, I'll make a video. If you guys got any questions, I definitely encourage you guys to fire those away. So if you have questions about Hawaii or, you know, a travel in general, because I, I do have a travel uh, focus with most of my work so if you have any questions just in general go ahead and fire them at me um, so the question is coming in from Mike Coase aren't you afraid of tsunamis and the inevitable eruption of the volcano so this is just gonna address natural disasters and the idea of li living under that threat here in Hawaii Joe, Joe Monroe he said it's a shield he, he commented on that so you know that's cool Joe Monroe said, it's a shield volcano, safer than living within 1,000 miles of Yellowstone, Caldera, live at higher altitude to avoid tsunamis. So I agree with some of that and some of that I don't agree with. Not anything against Joe, because that's just a comment and that's cool. Uh, he said, it's safer than living within 1,000 miles of Yellowstone, Caldera. Um, if you're living on the big island, I think you have more of a higher uh, chance of being affected by a volcanic eruption than someone living in Yellow, near Yellowstone. But I think what he's saying is that the super volcano in Yellowstone's caldera, the caldera Yellowstone, is a super volcano and if that sucker were to go, uh, you know, it could be pretty violent. I think that's what Joe's getting at. But I know that the frequency of volcano eruptions and in the Big Island and on the southern part from Puna to Ka'u to South Kona, it's the frequency is way more uh, common than Yellowstone. So I don't know that you're safer in within a thousand miles of Yellowstone. No, I, I think you are safer if you're living in Wyoming. Let's just say that, or Idaho, uh, at this particular moment. So to to drill down on Mike's question to talk about the uh, volcano eruption um, let's talk about that so by the way Joe's comment about living up higher up applies to for, to avoid tsunamis applies to volcanoes also because when the volcano erupts the lava river flows downhill so if you're over a ridge of the volcano of the volcano like Kilauea you know it's gonna take the path of least resistance the, the big thing you have to keep in mind is the volcanic uh, smog. The sulfuric acid does play a factor on people's health and if there's a massive eruption, it's gonna be really in the air and you're gonna feel that even all the way in Kona and Hilo, even if you're not under threat from the actual lava river. So keep that in mind. Um, as far as being afraid here in Maui, no, not really. I mean, I went up to Haleakala the other day. I made that video. Uh, you got to see what Haleakala looks like. They say that thing's extinct. <laughs> I mean, I know science is cool and all, and they're pretty accurate, but it doesn't seem extinct to me. I mean, I'm not trying to discount what the scientists say, but I know I, scientists have been wrong before, and by the looks of Haleakala, I'm not so convinced that that uh, volcano or that mountain is done done going. I know they say that it moves in plates and um, the, the, there's no magma underneath Haleakala. I don't know. I've hiked down there. That They say that lava flow is over a thousand years old. It doesn't look like it's over a thousand years old down on the uh, southern flank of Haleakala. Obviously, science says it is extinct, so I'm going to go with kind of agreeing with that, but it just, I get the sense that Haleakala might not completely be done, but according to science it is. So on Maui, no, I don't feel threatened by the Big Islands, volcanoes, necessarily, you know, Ma Mauna Loa or Kilauea, or even Hawaii. But if they were to erupt, you know, they could, they could have landslides that would create a tsunami that would affect Maui. They could have volcanic ash that could affect Maui, you know, or other islands like Oahu. They have, the History Channel made a, a video talking about the super volcano Mauna Loa, which is on the big island. 
That's not uh, Kilauea, which is the active one right now. That Mauna Loa last went off in 1983. So um, they, the History Channel said that Honolulu could be just wiped out by a, a tsunami from the mega volcano. I'm assuming Mike Coase might, might have watched that. That might be where this question is originating from. Um, but basically the idea behind that is if Mauna Loa went, a landslide would happen. That landslide would, for, would fall into the ocean, creating this big wall of water. And that wall of water would just start moving very rapidly across the island chain. Uh, affect with a, basically a head on with um, low, you know, swamp lands, low lands over in Pearl Harbor and uh, Waikiki and stuff. Which would mean, yeah, you'd want to be at higher ground if a tsunami ever happened. Now, to talk about tsunamis, yes, there has been several tsunamis here. If you look at the, uh, like, seven of the most horrifying disasters, I want to say five of them were natural disasters here in Hawaii. So you have the 1946 Aleutian Island Tsunami Earthquake. That was the one that happened in... Uh, so, Alaska is where the Aleutian Islands are. That would be north. On April 1, 1946, there was an earthquake in Aleutian Islands off Alaska. Five hours later, the largest and most destructive tsunami waves recorded hit Hawaii. Because no advance warning was given, 159 people died during the disaster, mainly as a result of curious individuals who ventured into the exposed reef unaware of what was about to hit them. In some areas, the waves penetrated nearly half a mile inland and caused $26 million in property damage. Areas that were really affected by a, a wall of water coming in from the north like that would be the YPO Valley, Paulu Valley, La Pahoyhoy, um, Hilo, Hawaiian beaches, just low, low areas on the northeast side of the island would have been, you know, really hit. Now, one thing we know about tsunamis is before there's a before the tsunami, the big wall of water comes in, there's like a suction that takes place. So, when the water's disrupt displaced or disrupted, it it shallows and then it comes back in again at a higher level. So, all that water, it's just like a bathtub. If you splash one end of the, the water one way, it'll you know, it'll create a depression and it'll get lower and then it'll come back through and you know, you, you get that? So that's why that happens, where basically reefs that have never been exposed are all of a sudden exposed because of the vibration. And that creates the big wave that eventually comes back through, covers the reef, and then covers the land. So yeah, if you're living at higher altitude or higher elevation, I mean, it could just be as much as being at 100 feet altitude or uh, elevation could could keep you safe so you know if you're living up on a sea cliff and a big wave comes you know that could create a, uh, a landslide so <laughs> you know on the Hamakua coast you got big old uh, sea cliffs big wave hits that who knows what could happen to your home right so Obviously, you have the attack on Pearl Harbor. That's another thing. I don't think, obviously, that's not a natural disaster. That's a man-made disaster. But there is some threat that comes comes up about if, if the Far East, China, Japan, Korea, were to launch an attack against the United States, how vulnerable would Hawaii be? Strategically, it's a military base, so... You gotta keep that in mind. Now, number three, the Kilauea volcanic eruption. The most recent major eruption of Kilauea located on the Big Island began in 1983 and is still causing destruction today. The basalt lava flows can flow as fast as 10 to 30 miles per hour and have destroyed more than 210 structures, covered 48 square miles of land, buried nine miles of highway under lava, and added 499 acres of land to the island. Previously, the Mauna Ulu eruption from 1969 to 1974 created new land on the island and covered much of the existing land and lava. So this is this is going back to the, the 
comment that was made where they were saying that Yellowstone is more dangerous than the, the volcanoes on the Big Island. The frequency here is obviously every 15 years. There's there's some sort of disruptive eruption. You know, you got 1969 to 1974, 1983. I mean, the on on and off we've had eruptions. You know, Pahoa town had to be evacuated in 2014. The, the town of Pahoa, and it was the lava was no joke coming into Pahoa. It took out the transfer station. It was, and then it just miraculously stopped. But it, the whole town of Pahoa thought it was going to get taken out. This was in 2014. So, I mean, it can ha all it takes is the lava to just erupt one day and within two months you know you could see a town taken out like Hawaiian beaches or Kalapana you know so yeah you don't really have that going on in Yellowstone now here's another one hurricanes Hurricane Iwa and Hurricane Aniki these are the ones that everyone talks about that Hurricane Aniki that was let's go over this on November 23rd, 1982, Category 1, Hurricane Iwa hit Hawaiian Islands, Niihau, Kauai, and Oahu, the first major hur hurricane to hit Hawaii since it became a state in 1959. Ten years later, on September 11th, Hurricane Iki, pictured, hit Kauai, leaving six dead and causing $1.8 billion in damages, the most powerful hurricane to strike Kauai in recorded history. Here's something to keep in mind about hurricanes. Most hurricanes originate in the Mexican Riviera. That is down there by Acapulco, you know, kind of Costa Rica, Panama, Honduras, Belize. That's kind of like the area where the hurricanes originate mostly. And then they press west. These two hurricanes would have come from the east. The hurricanes that come from the west tend to be tropical storms by the time they hit Hilo or Puna, the big island. It would take an incredible path for a hurricane from the west to really be a direct hit with Hawaii. Because by the time it gets to the Big Island, it's being really interfered with by the, the high pressure systems that build up around the big volcanoes, basically the four or five volcanoes. You know, you have four peaks. You have Mauna Kea, Mauna Loa, um, Kohala and uh, Hawalalai. Those four mountains are, are big enough to really just destroy hurricanes, so Kona won't even really get affected by those. Now, if it's coming from the other direction, just look at a map. That, that, because the islands, they curve, you know? If it's coming in like that, poof, I mean, it can be pretty big, okay? So, hurricanes from the east, they're actually called typhoons in Asia, but we call them hurricanes here. Westlock disaster, classified as a top secret until 1960, the maritime accident which occurred on May 21, 1944, began with an explosion in staging area for landing ships, tanks, and other amphibious assault ships in the Pearl Harbor's West Lock. A fire spread throughout the ships that were preparing for Operation Forager, the invasion of the Japanese occupied Marianas Islands. 163 Navy personnel were killed and another 396 were injured. You know, Pearl Harbor, a lot of military personnel were uh, injured or, or killed, but they also, there was also some civilian casualties in that, in particular those who were closer to the base. Pearl Harbor, if you were living in Hawaii and Pearl Harbor happened in Oahu, if you were on the island of Oahu, that was, that was very, it was a very scary time for people that then. And that's not an understatement. Uh, the Great Chilean Earthquake. This happened in 1960. This was, so 1946 was the Aleutian Island earthquake that created the tsunami. This time it was in 1960, 14 years later, that another tsunami would come from the west 
and affect the Big Island's east, east coast for the Big Island. The 1960 Valdiva earthquake, which occurred on May 22, 1960, was rated on a 9.5 on the Richter scale. The most powerful earthquake ever recorded. The tsunami that resulted affected southern Chile, Japan, the Philippines, eastern New Zealand, southern Australia, and the Aleutian Islands, and Hawaii. Worldwide fatalities are estimated between 2,200 and 5,700, with only 61 casualties in Hilo, Hawaii, and approximately $500,000 in U.S. property damage. So, this one, this one was uh, felt globally. If you're living in Hawaii and you hear of any earthquakes that happened, basically from Alaska all the way down to, to um, Chile, you know, two, two polar opposite places, but it's part of the Ring of Fire. That's part of the Ring of Fire. The Ring of Fire goes all the way around the Pacific. For an earthquake, or for an earthquake tsunami to affect um, Japan and Philippines and New Zealand and Southern Australia like that, wow, I mean, the most powerful earthquake ever recorded. The most deadly earthquake that I ever known that I've ever heard of that created a tsunami was in, is they call it the Boxer Day Tsunami. I think it was in 2004. I was actually in the Navy at the time. And we were in Hong Kong. We reported in Hong Kong. And that earthquake happened off a place called Banda Aceh. And that is in the Straits of Sumatra, which is basically uh, Indonesia. And that earthquake was I think a 9.3. I mean, you can look on the internet for videos of that, but wow, that is, I think 230,000 people at least passed away on that from Indonesia and Thailand mostly. Because of the way the islands are structured over there in that part of the Ring of Fire, it didn't press all the way towards Hawaii, but it could have. Another earthquake, or earthquake that was pretty big was the one in Japan. I want to say that happened in 2011. You know, they were, they got, they felt that, they felt that tsunami here in Hawaii. There's videos online in 2011 of that tsunami hitting Kona. And you can see down there by Kailua Pier, yet again, the water, the, the water pulled out, the reefs were exposed. You could see the tires in the water. You know, you could see tires in Kilo or, uh, Kailua Bay. And then it, so it, the reef was exposed. Then all of a sudden the water came and flooded all of Ali'i Drive, shops and everything. That's not, that, I'm not making that up when I say all of Ali'i Drive got flooded. You can talk to store owners down there if you don't believe me. Take their word for it over mine. I wasn't there, but I've seen the videos and I've talked to locals who said, yeah, in 2011, Ali'i Drive got flooded. So, I don't know what happened on the other islands. I know that, you know, some of the marinas were affected because that water pushed up, broke off some uh, marina stuff. And So, I, I would say, yeah, I mean, if you live in Hawaii long enough, you will be affected by a natural disaster at some point because they tend to have, you know, they're happening right now. There's lava flow going right now. I mean, every 10 to 15 years, there's some sort of major event. But, you know, go talk to the people in California about earthquakes or talk to the people in Florida about hurricanes. Here in Hawaii, you got earthquakes, hurricanes, tsunamis, volcanoes, I mean, that's four right there. Am I missing one? <laughs> so, yeah. Hawaii is right in smack dab in the middle of the ocean, and uh, it gets some action. Anyways, guys, if you like adventure, hey, <laughs> go for it. All right, see you guys. Subscribe to this channel if you like.